transparent processes and auto accountability, audibility, accountability audits. This is nothing new, by the way. This is what 28 CFR is. 28 CFR intelligence operation. Uh, that's what that policy is. It is also the other area that you deal with every single day. CJIS, Criminal Justice Information System Network. Everything, all of us, all of us who are who use NCIC, that, that, that use the criminal justice information system, all of us do that's our day-to-day -day work. Well, all this is built into the use of that. CFIS is, is the driver's license information, it's the criminal history record information, it's other databases of sensitive information that are out there. Law enforcement is used to using it. We understand the repercussions if you misuse it. If there are accountability audits are going to crack down when it's inappropriate. All of this, this is our day-to-day -day business. So we got, we're used to dealing with a side over here with very strict accountability and uh, uh, usage requirements. When we jump over here in social media, where well, there aren't any. And I tell you why there aren't any, but we look for them. Technology permits law enforcement to have easy and extensive access to information on citizens, and but today the privacy issues are more important than they have ever been. It is the consensus on many of the law enforcement officials that I deal with on the national level, what I said earlier. If we are not careful, we're already losing the ability to use some technology because restrictions are being put onto us by because there's concerns in, in, the, in the legislatures and the Congress about it. We are losing and we will, we will lose more in the future. That's why we've got to lead the, the, uh, the got to be the point of the spear on these private and civil liberties issues. We're going to get rammed down our throat and we ain't going to like the outcome. I want you to walk away from here understanding that when it comes to technology and social media that you need to be looking at your law enforcement activities through, a prism, through the prism of privacy and civil liberties issues. We've got to do it ourselves. Other people are already do it. I'm going to show you how to do that. We'll do that with, we'll do this with the policy we're going to get in here in a minute. Here's what my perspective of someone who is who is uh, not attuned to technology. In fact, I've heard the staff talk about Merlin Keenan knows about the information superhighway and he roadkill on the superhighway. And uh, there's, it's true to that. But the, uh, we sat down with our privacy committee and looked at some of the issues I'm talking to you about. And what we came back, came back to came back to is some common sense police work. The technology, whether it is social media, whether it is case management software, whether it's license plate readers, whether it is drones, whether it is whatever you talk about, that is not, it is a merely a tool. It is not an answer for good police work. It's not a substitute for good police work. Many of our young officers think otherwise. They grew up in the technology world. That's not, the law enforcement executives we don't get lost in this technology, this new technology here, and forget that this good police work there's no substitute for. It. Basic principles of law enforcement continue to apply whether it's social media or whether it's license plate readers or go on and on. We look around for guidance for use of social media on the privacy and civil liberties side. Started out with a project to do just that, come out with this document, which is a guideline that uh, is available at the uh, been talked about on the website. First thing we did was do a legal research. What is the case law related that's, that's specific to the use of social media? Did the research. I had a team of lawyers volunteered to do it. It didn't take very long. You know why? Ain't any out there. It's not it's gonna be some. It's gonna come, the case law's gonna come, and it's gonna come on the backs of law enforcement agencies having misused technology. That's where the case law is. And we're not going to like the outcome. This document gives guidance and recommendations on issues please be concerned with when, you, when you're uh, using set technology, when you're using uh, social media so that you develop a policy to prevent you from being the agency that becomes the uh, subject of the case law. Okay, so what are the law enforcement principles that don't change? 
our actions got to be lawful. Not only that, they got to they got to they got to conform to the community standards. Here's where here's what many agencies are doing in social media side. Because the case law is not there that prohibits us from doing certain things. We're not prohibited because we're not prohibited. We go ahead and do things. Well, this is to try to bring this in focus. We, it, just because it's lawful, it's not prohibited. Doesn't mean it can be appropriate. You got to meet the standards in the, You got to meet the standards of your community, standards in your state. I come from a state that is very conservative, and things that may be permissible out in California, which is a pretty liberal state in certain parts or whatever, are not, not going to apply in Georgia. We're not going to legalize marijuana in the state of Georgia. Yes. Everybody might be using methamphetamine in the 